because it's an uplifting book. Philippians is a book uh, written to a church that Paul started in Acts chapter 16, and it's a church that he loves. It's a, it's a people that he loves. In fact, what you're reading here about Euodius and Syntyche is really one of the only negative things in the whole book. He did mention enemies to the cross last week, but he also mentioned that he weeps over them and is praying for them and so forth. But th there's not a lot of correction in the book. He's writing it to people that he loves. He talks about uh, uh, some of the things in there that, that are key to this book is the word joy. Joy is seen throughout this book. Uh, it's a book about joy. The word Christ is mentioned uh, many times in this book. The word gospel is mentioned, and the other thing would be the word mind. So you've got joy, Christ, uh, what did I say? Gospel and mind. Those are the four kind of key things. And uh, a lot of those things go together. You get Christ first and the gospel. It gives you joy, <laughs> helps your mindset, all of that. And so as we're going through that, keep that in mind as we're getting to some of these verses that are very famous. Especially with rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. But uh, Paul is, is winding down this letter. He got through chapter 3. At the beginning of chapter 3, he talked about, hey, beware of those Judaizers that say you have to work your way to heaven. You have to be uh, believe in Christ, but you also have to be circumcised or obey Jewish law. Then he talks about how he gave all of that up because it wasn't going to get him to heaven. He wanted Christ's righteousness. And so he uh, uh, says that in chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And then he talks about his goal in life is to know Jesus Christ and, and to live in a way that he's not going to be ashamed when he sees Christ. And, and that's what he talks about for a long time. And now he's getting to the conclusion and he's winding this letter down to people that he loves. And he begins to leave them <clears throat> just some random bits of advice. We saw this in Romans too. As he's closing the letter, it's almost like he's got a list of things that he has to take care of. He's like, oh, by the way, fix this. By the way, do that. Did your parents ever, when, when maybe when you were a teenager or something, or maybe your parents now, and, and you leave your kids in the house for a while, and you're walking out the door to go to work or something, it's summertime, and, and you're saying, hey, make sure you, you clean your room. And the kids are like, yeah, whatever. No, I'm just kidding. They better not be. And uh, you're like, make sure you take out the trash, do your chores. Hey, when I get back from the grocery store, this room better look like a brand new room. You ever done that one before? All right, yeah. And, uh, or, or whatever, maybe finish that food on your plate. We, we leave some parting advice. And, and that's what parents do. It's kind of like, make sure you do this. Make sure you take care of that. And here's the man that started this church, and he's finishing a letter to people that he loves, and he's kind of saying, hey, and here's a couple things you need to make sure, be, make, make, uh, take care of before I get back. Okay, make sure that, that you stand fast. Make sure that you talk to Euodius and Syntyche. There's some schism there. There's something going on. Let's make sure we get that fixed. Let's make sure we help these people. Let's make sure you're always rejoicing. And then he's going to go into some more stuff. But, he, but he's kind of giving this, this uh, uh, um, spiritual parent advice, this spiritual fatherly advice as he's ending the letter. Now look at verse 1. Notice, because we need to keep this in mind, how he refers to the people he's talking to. 